and welcome to Stock Charting Basics, getting started with chart analysis. I'm going to explain some of the basics about how to read a stock chart. If you are already experienced with stock charts, then you might find this a little too introductory, but if you've never looked at a chart before or you want to learn some of the basic concepts of charting, then this video is a good place to start. So what we're going to do in this video is start off with what is a chart, whether it's a stock chart, a commodity chart, doesn't matter, an index chart, ETF chart, they're all the same. And so I'll explain that. I'll explain the concept of candlestick charting. We'll talk a little bit about indicators, show you the different ways to make a chart have different time frames and the importance of time frame confirmation. And then I'll talk a little bit about drawing on charts and the tool that I use for that. So what is a chart? Well, really what it does is plots price change over time. In the simplest form, it is a graphical representation of how price changes over time. Now most charts will also display trading volumes. So if you're looking at a one year daily chart, it'll show the volume of stock traded day by day, looking back over the past year, in addition to how the price changed over that last year. Now when you have a chart, you also typically have some ability to add indicators, and I'll get into some of those indicators in a moment. And um, with the Charting nowadays, there's many different chart types. I like candlestick charts. I'll be explaining candlesticks in a moment, but there's line charts, there's open, high, low, close charts. There's a lot of different uh, charting styles. And then, of course, there's just the chart time frame. You know, if you're an investor, you might be looking at a daily chart going back uh, a year or two. You might even look at a weekly chart going back a number of years. When I'm day trading or swing trading, I'm looking at an intraday chart on a two minute interval or a 10 minute interval, 13 minute interval. So you can have lots of different chart time frames. Well, let's sort of look at a chart now and see what these things look like. This is a chart of Suncor and uh, it is a daily chart going back about a year. And you can see that there's all these colored full little bars on here. And really what that is, is it, it highlights how that stock traded on a particular day. So on this day in March, the stock jumped up above $38 a share the previous day it had closed at just over $37 a share. You can also notice that for a number of months, the stock was, the stock was kind of stuck inside a sideways trading range. And then it started to move into an upward trend. And really when you're looking at the chart, you're seeing a graphical representation of how that played out. You also see here on volume below the chart, and you'll see that some of these volume bars are colored red, some are colored gray, some are green that has some meaning. Uh, if it's gray, it means the stock closed at the previous day's open. If it's green, it closed above the previous day's open. And if it is red, it closed below the previous day's open. And I'll explain what the colors on a candlestick chart mean in just a moment. All right, here's an intraday chart of Suncor. So same stock, but instead of looking back a year day by day, in this instance, we're looking back five days and in each case, each bar on this chart is five minutes of trading. All right, so it's a different kind of a time frame, and it's uh, really just a, a shorter term look, very short term look at how a stock traded over the previous five days. And you can see five days ago, over here on the left, the stock was at uh, 41.90. It fell all the way down to uh, just a little over $40.10. And in the course of one day, it went from a, you know, a starting point in the day of $40.20 all the way up to $41.20. So it gained about a dollar or two and a half percent in the course of that day. Uh, you'll notice here on the time scale, you can see 9.30 a.m., which is when the market opens, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, each day, that's the open right there. That's why there's a double line. So these are charts from stock scores. You can get charts from other places. Everyone's charts are going to look a little bit different. Um, I like our charts because they're big and easy to follow, but... Uh, you have to pick the chart that's right for you. All right, now let's talk a little bit about candlesticks. Candlestick charting is the style of charting that I prefer because it gives a lot of information inside the chart. It displays the relationship between the opening price, the high price, the low price, and the closing price for a certain time frame. And they're color-coded when you look at the chart. It's really a short-term indication of supply and demand. So here we're looking at the explanation of how that all works. So a candle will represent any time frame. So if we're looking at a daily chart, then this would be a daily candle. 
And the bottom of the big box, which we call the body of the candle, that is our opening price. The extreme low on the chart, which this is called the tail, um, that is the low price. So the stock could have opened at $10, gone down to $9.95, and then as the time progressed through the trading day, it ended up hitting perhaps $11 and closing at $10.95. So the difference between the open and the close is what defines the body, and the extreme uh, difference between the high and the low is the overall trading range for the day. All right. Now it's green if it closes above where it opened. It's red if it closes below where it opened. So you can start to get a sense of how the stock was moving through the trading day by looking at the candle. If you have a red candle, you can see that the stock was generally moving down through the day and closed at a price lower than where it opened. And so we call those bearish candles. Uh, bearish being a negative connotation. A bullish candle is a green one. That means the buyers were in control through that period. And bearish means the sellers were in control. Neutral means that it just basically closed on its open. And that's why we don't have any color to the candle. It's just a little cross. They call this a doji. All right. Um, it's important to recognize that I've been talking about this in terms of daily charts. So I've been saying the, you know, it opened for the day here and it closed there, but it can really be any time frame. This could be a weekly candle. It could be a two minute candle where we are tracking how the stock traded over two minutes. And when you're day trading, that becomes important. You know, when I'm swing trading, I like to look at a 13 minute candle and I'll look for the colors on those candles as well. Now, many people that do chart analysis like to include indicators on their charts. There's, I guess, four different classes of indicators that we have on stockscores.com. There are price indicators, volume indicators, momentum indicators, and the stock scores indicators. So we're in stock scores now, and here I can show for you different indicators. I can go to the charting tab and I can add indicators in down below here. We can add moving averages, we can add price bands, technical indicator one, two, three, or four, and there's lots of choices. You can see here all the different choices of indicator. Now when you do that, you ultimately create a chart that has a lot more lines on it. Now I've taken the Suncor chart and I've added in a momentum indicator called the MACD, which stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence, and it's a, again another way for investors to gauge whether the buyers are in control or the sellers. We've got a, a price indicator here called average true range. We have the stock score indicator, which is my own proprietary indicator. And what's unique about the stock score indicator is that it is a basket of about a dozen different technical analysis indicators. I've combined a whole bunch of common technical analysis concepts like the MACD and built them into an indicator. Now there's actually another video on the getting started uh, area of the stock scores education center where you can learn exactly how the stock scores work and I'm not going to go into it in this video but I encourage you to go take a look at the uh, stock scores indicator video in the stock scores education center all right so I personally don't use a lot of indicators I find that chart pattern recognition is more suitable for me and again we've got a video in the stock scores education center about how to read chart patterns the elements of chart patterns and predictive chart patterns you'll see that in the foundation area um, but that's my style of trading, and I just find that I have a lot more success taking that approach as opposed to using indicators. It's a very personalized thing. Some people like indicators. They will base their trading decision off of things like the MACD, and certainly when the MACD crosses above, you see how the blue line is crossing above the pink here, and that also corresponded with the stock breaking out and moving into an upward trend. So it does have some value, but I would just rather look at the chart and say, hey, it's breaking out of an ascending triangle, and Therefore, it's a stock that I'd like to buy at that moment. All right. Now, we've been kind of focused on daily charts thus far, but there's all different kinds of time frames in a chart. We can look at intraday charts, and you can do them on any time frame in the intraday. You could do it tick by tick, every 30 seconds, a one minute, a two minute, a five minute, a 10 minute, all sorts of time frames in the chart. You can, with some programs, actually pick the time frame that you want. Now in stock scores we have a lot of different time frames. I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, we also can look at just what happens day by day. So that's the daily time frame. Week by week. So what's the opening price for the week? The closing price for the week? And what was the high and the low for the week? That'll be displayed in a weekly chart. You can even look at a monthly chart. 
And you can also choose how far back you make the chart look. You know, if you're looking at a five minute chart, to go back more than five or 10 days, the chart gets pretty crowded. So you probably only wanna look back five or 10 days. On the other hand, if you look at a monthly chart, you can look back 10 years and the chart still makes some sense. So if we go back to the stock scores tool here, what we've done is created these little links up at the top that allow you to change the time frame very quickly, but you can also go into the charting tab and change the time frame there. So I could make this an intraday chart, look back period five days, as I said, and now I've got a, an ability to look back in a very short picture or short window on that particular stock. Now I like to look for time frame confirmation. Let me explain what I mean by that. When we're looking at a, at a stock, if you're looking at a daily chart, it might look great. And you have to ask yourself, well, who looks at daily charts or who has that time horizon that they would be looking at a daily chart? And it's probably the group of investors that like to hold stocks for weeks or months, probably not years, because that's a little long term for the daily chart. So you're gonna have all of those people um, who are looking at that chart who are gonna have a different opinion than the person who looks at a five minute chart. Let me show you what I mean. If I go into this chart here at Microsoft, when I look at the daily chart, I say, wow, that's a good, strong looking stock. It's been trending higher for the last year. And as, as a daily chart analyst, I would say that's a strong stock, something that I'd certainly want to hold. I don't know if I would want to buy it here, but um, it's something that I'd want to hold. Now look what happens when I make this a five day chart. So I'm going to click on this little fast link at the top, make it a five day, five minute chart. Now what happens? Well, now I see a stock that's going down over time. As we move from left to right in this chart, price is falling. It's suddenly a very negative chart. What if I take a look at, uh, if I go back to, uh, sorry, we'll go back to a three-year chart and make it a weekly chart now. The weekly chart looks very strong. So the longer term trader looks at the weekly chart and says, Microsoft is a great stock. The person looking at the daily chart says, I agree, Microsoft is a great looking stock. But if you look at, as I said earlier, the 15 day chart, you say, well, actually it's been kind of lousy for the last four or five days and I'm a little worried about where it's gonna go. So when I'm trading, I might be, let's say I'm swing trading a stock and I'm looking at the 10 day, 13 minute chart for my analysis, I may think, well, it looks great, but then I'll jump to the uh, daily chart and see that there's gonna be a lot of people wanting to sell that stock because it's not doing all that well on that longer time frame. Now again, this video is not meant to really explain how to read charts. There's other videos in the Stock Scores Education Center for that. I just want to give you a sense that we can look at time frames, we can look at look back periods, and more the more time frames that you put on your side, the better off that trade is going to be. Now, it's also possible to draw on charts. If you have software specialized for trading installed on your computer, those stocks give you all kinds of tools for drawing lines on the chart. We actually have the ability to draw lines on our chart as well if you use the interactive chart, but to be quite honest, those tools aren't all that powerful. There is another tool out there that I really recommend you use if you want to draw on the charts that you generate on stock scores. It's called Snagit. You can go to snagit.com. You have to buy it. I think it's $49 or something, but it gives you a real nice ability to grab any image off of the internet and draw on it, uh, save it, cut and paste it into other things. And so it really sort of takes that problem of web-based charting, having very limited drawing ability and making it a lot better. So I'm back on stock scores now. Let's make this a six month uh, daily chart, which is what it is now. If I wanted to grab this chart, I've got Snagit installed on my computer. I just hit Control P and it gives me this tool now where I can grab the image and now I can draw on it. And so you see here I've got some drawing tools. There's many different drawing tools. I can draw an upward trend line. I can show that that upward trend line is getting steeper by making that line a curve. So I can start to bend this line and do some things with it to show that the trend is going parabolic. I can, whoops, I'll delete that one. There we go. I can take a red line and draw some lines of resistance like that and say, oh, nice breakout there. Here's another breakout. So you can start to draw patterns on the chart. There was an ascending triangle breakout. All of the things that you'll learn when you get into the foundation portion of the uh, stuff on the Stock Scores Education Center, really it helps to be able to draw on that chart. You can also add you know, text. You can 
uh, cut and paste pieces of the chart. There's all kinds of nice tools on here and that's why I like to use it. All right, let's get back to the presentation. That's pretty much the end. It was an overview of the uh, basics of charting, how charts move through time, displaying the price and volume activity. You can add indicators to charts. You can draw on charts with some of these tools. And you know, keep in mind that the stock scores charts really give you a lot of the tools that you need to look at different time frames, look back periods. Um, make sure that you watch some of the uh, videos in this area about the actual stock scores charts because I'll go into more detail about how to use those charts. For this video, the purpose is really just to give you an overview of charting and we'll get more sophisticated in some of the other videos.